This is how to make and manage symbols in Adobe Animate. All right, so before we get started, let's quickly go over what the difference is between a shape and a symbol. So a shape, if I click here, you can see I can still select all the different parts of the shape because a shape is anything that was drawn with, let's say, the brush, shape tool, anything like that that's still in, let's call it, drawing or art form that you can still manipulate. Like I can go to the paint bucket tool, change this. I can still manipulate it with those same tools, brush, shape tool, you know, paint bucket tool, anything like that. And like I mentioned at the start, it's also still selectable. So you can either click on things to select it. You can put a box around all of it to select everything or just a part. And then if you do that, you can just delete it or you can click on the keyframe. I have shape shoe here that'll also select all of it. A symbol on the other hand, if I click over here, is actually a container for the original art. So I can move this around all together. If I go to my free transform tool, I can you know, scale it up, scale it down, rotate it, skew it, do all that kind of stuff to it. I'm just gonna undo. But if I wanna make any changes to the actual shoe, I have to double click on it, which will take me into the symbol timeline. So right here, that's what this little symbol is that says for the shoe. And now this shoe that was a symbol is now back to being art that I can manipulate the same way that I could for the other one over here. So if I wanted to make any changes in terms of color here, I can go to the paint bucket, click here. And then now if I go back using this arrow to go back to the main timeline, you can see that the symbol one is now changed. Just know that if I go to the library, you'll see it right here. This is the symbol of shoe. If I had multiple instances of that shoe, that symbol shoe on here, and I went into any one of them, so if I double click on this one and go in, and I use that paint bucket to change it back, so I'm gonna pick this color and click that, you can see that it'll change all of them. So now when I go back, all of the symbol shoes will be the same. But if I click back over on this one and decided to change the color of that one to something different, you can see that it doesn't impact the other ones because that one's a separate shoe that's still art that's not part of this symbol. But if I go to the free transform tool, I can manipulate the scale and rotation of each of these shoes that are part of the symbol as a separate thing because remember for free transform, I'm just manipulating the container that the shoe is in, not the actual shoe itself. Okay, so now let's go over the three different ways that you can actually make symbols. So as you can see here, I have the starting of an animation. I've made the shirt into a symbol already and the shorts into a symbol, but now I'm gonna make the hat. So to start, I'm gonna go insert, new symbol. I'm gonna call this hat new, because this is using the new symbol way. And I'm gonna keep the type as a graphic. So you can see there's different ones here. Keep it as a graphic and click OK. So before you do anything, you can see if I go over to library, you're gonna see that hat new showed up here. And then now all I have to do is within this, you know, symbol thing here, you can see that it's a symbol. I can just draw the hat. So I'm gonna draw the hat really quick. Okay, so there's my Santa Claus hat. If I go to my library now, on hat new, you can see that that's where the symbol is, and shirt, shoe, and shorts, the thing that we've talked about so far. So hat new. Now, if I go back to, so if you see here, this is within the symbol. So if I click this back arrow and go back to my main animation, all I have to do is drag hat new onto the stage and let go. I'm just gonna undo that for a second, because you gotta make sure that you're on the right layer. So I already have a hat layer made, if you didn't have a layer ready for whatever you're dragging in, just make sure you go new layer here and name it, then drag it in, make sure it's on the right layer, let go, then just go to free transform, scale it and position it where you want. The second way to make a symbol is what I call from scratch. So this is that original drawing of the shoe that's not a symbol yet. You can see I can still select on each of the pieces. In fact, I still have to fill this in. So I'm gonna go to the paint bucket, pick that color and fill this in. So once you have your object drawn that you know you want to convert into a symbol, all you have to do is click on the keyframe that's associated with the layer that has the drawing on it. You can see that it'll select everything with the, this mesh like dotted stuff here. 
then just go up to modify, convert to symbol, name it. So I'm gonna call this one just shoe started or from scratch method. And I'm gonna keep it as a graphic again, click okay. And you can see now it turns into that symbol. If I go to my library, you can see shoe started right there. And if I double click here or here, then it'll go into the symbol. You can see right here, shoe started symbol. I can mess with it if I want again. So let's just go in here and quickly change the color here. And then if I go back, you can see that the shoe has been changed here within the symbol. So now if I go back to my original animation, so I'm gonna zoom this one out, I can now go to my library, make sure I'm on left shoe, drag one of the shoe started onto there, go over to right shoe and drag another one on. Just this one, I'd have to go to my free transform tool, flip it, and then obviously scale both of them down so they fit properly within the animation and place them where I want them. Which brings us to the third method of creating a new symbol, which is kind of a combination between method one and two. So as you can see in this case, I have multiple layers for the hat, the shirt, the shorts, the left shoe, the right shoe, all of which are symbols. So I've made them all into symbols, but now I wanna mash all of these together into a new symbol that let's say is gonna be called dancer. So all I have to do is select everything. So I'm gonna put a box around everything. You can either do it that way, or you can click in here and select all the keyframes, then right click on the keyframes and copy frames. I prefer to copy the frames. By the way, this also works if you've already created an animation. All you have to do is select all the frames, right click and go to copy frames as well. Then you're gonna go back up to insert new symbol. I'm gonna call this one dancer, like I said, make it a graphic, click okay. And then all you have to do on this one keyframe that's part of this new dancer symbol, just right click on it and paste frames. That'll paste all those layers back in. And you might be going, well, so what's the big difference? Now we have basically the exact same thing. But remember, this one's within a symbol. So now if I go back to my original, I can now go into my library, take this dancer and drag the full dancer in. But before I do that, I gotta make sure I make a new layer. So I'm gonna make a new layer here, call this one dancer. On that layer, drag dancer in. So now he comes in, now I have another dancer. And the difference is that this dancer is a symbol this dancer is all in pieces of symbols. All right, so now I'm gonna do a super simple animation for each of these to show you why using symbols is far superior. Okay, so let's start with this one over here. I'm gonna to go to one second and put keyframes. I'm gonna highlight down the middle, right click and create classic tween so I can move each of them. Just know that if you are editing this way, you need to, need to, need to, deal with your scale of your objects first. So I'm gonna to go to the very start here, highlight each of the first keyframes. I'm gonna scale this guy down, move him back. And then at the end keyframes here, he's gonna be back to regular size. So it looks like that. He goes from there to there. Now in between, I'm gonna just click a keyframe for each of these. I'm gonna tilt the hat. I'm gonna put a keyframe and just scrunch the shirt in. For one of the shoes, I'll put a keyframe and tilt it up and the other one I'll just put a keyframe later on and tilt it up as well. Okay, so now we have a very simple animation where technically he's dancing towards us. Okay, for this one, I have to click on it. Then I got to double click to go into the symbol. You can see it's the new timeline now that doesn't have any of the things that we just did, but we're going to basically make the exact same animation. However, for this way, I'm going to go to one second, put in the keyframes, do the same thing classic tweens, we don't have to worry about scale for this one. We can just go right into putting our keyframes and messing with our objects. So I'm gonna tilt the hat, I'm gonna go for the shirt, squash it down, I'm gonna go to the shoe here, tilt it up, and the other shoe, tilt it up. Okay, so we've made basically the exact same thing, except now when we go back into the original one, out of the dancer symbol, we go back to the original, we can see that now all we have to do is put a keyframe here, boom, right click, classic tween that one, and then now we can go to the very start, 
We can scale this one down to kind of match the other one. And then at the end here, they'll be the same size. So we made the exact same animation basically, but the difference is, and this is where the big key comes in. Now, if I wanna do anything with this one, if I wanna change the size or let's just say even move it. So I'm gonna put a keyframe in the middle here and go, well, what if he danced over here instead? So now this guy dances over to the side and then back to the middle. If I wanted to do that with this one, it's gonna be a super pain in the butt because I'd have to try, I'm gonna do at the exact same spot. I'm gonna try and put keyframes there and move this one over, do the exact same thing. But you're gonna see, you're gonna run into just an absolute mess because there's all these other keyframes in here that are dealing with motion, size, scale, plus the rotation and movement of each object. It is just much better. I hope that's a clear example of why using symbols is much more advantageous. So basically the key thing to remember is that when you're using symbols, you should do your micro movements within the symbol. So if I double click here and go within the dancer symbol, you're gonna do your micro movements. So in this case, it'd be the way the shoes, the pants, everything are moving. Do those within the symbol on the unique timeline that is linked and associated with that particular symbol. So in this case, the dancer symbol. And then if I go back out to the original, do your macro movements, so the position and scale movements of the entire dancer, do those outside on the main timeline to the container of the symbol. And where that's the most obvious, if I add another layer here, I'm gonna call this one just dancer copy. If I drag another iteration of the dancer onto the stage, this one I'm not gonna resize or anything, you're gonna notice that both of these dancers have the same micro movements. So the hat, the pants, everything are gonna move the exact same, but their macro movements are gonna be different as evident by the fact that this one's not moving and this one is. And finally, I just want you to remember as well that if I go into this symbol and then I go into the shirt symbol, so a little bit of symbol inception here, go from original to dancer, now we're in the shirt symbol, that's the original artwork. So if I click on it, you're gonna see those dots. So this is the original thing that I drew using lines and shapes. But if I go to the paint bucket and I change its color, it's gonna affect everything because I've changed the original artwork. So every single symbol that is using that artwork is gonna change along with it. Which means that if you wanna have a dancer doing something different than the other dancers, and or wearing a different color shirt, you're gonna have to make new symbols or duplicate and change the symbols that exist. So I'm gonna right click and duplicate dancer to make dancer copy, click okay. So now within that one, I can double click and let's just say I can go into the hat here and have it do something different. Then if I go back and I delete the original guy out of here and drag dancer copy in, now he's gonna have different micro movements than the other guy. You can see his hat spinning, whereas this guy's doesn't spin. To change the shirt color, it's the exact same thing. Click on shirt, right click, duplicate that layer, go shirt copy, and then double click on shirt copy, and then within here, just change it to a different color. So if I click that, that one's different. Now, it's not gonna affect anything in here because we haven't put that shirt into anything but if I did want to, I could go into, let's say, dancer copy here and take out his shirt. So destroy that one, drag in shirt copy instead. I'd put it on the proper layer though, if I was doing this for real, scale this up, move it in. Now, if I go back, that shirt is changed. If you wanna know more about replicating objects and or looping animations, make sure to watch one of the videos that's linked on the screen right now.